As launch day approaches, we got a couple last minute projects we're going to finish up for Ruthless. So sit back and enjoy the show. Okay. forgetting to do this part but this is our autopilot and I've opened this up I've already cleaned out this part this is just the cap it had uh, eight aluminum pop rivets around it plastic pretty soft pop rivets I uh, used a very tiny drill bit to drill them out and then this is the gimbal the, the, the gyro and you can see there is an orientation. So there's forward. And, and this part um, hangs dependently. And then as the boat rolls side to side, uh, it understands um, what's going on based on this. I'm pretty. Um, so we'll. I'm, you know, I, we get these little projects in between the bigger part of the project. Uh, it'd be really nice to have autopilot to be able to point the ship in a bearing and just go. So we'll see. All right, so today we're um, working on our autopilot. Uh, bad news is, is that the autopilot that I've showed you that I've worked on uh, the gyro sensor was shot. Um, so what we're doing today is we are going high-tech uh, and low-cost all at the same time. This is a Raspberry Pi. Um, for those of you who know, uh, more importantly for those of you who don't, Raspberry Pi is a Linux operating system. And um, it's a little mini computer. Um, let me see if I can show you this thing. Turn it upside down. That's it. It's got four USB ports. It's got a, uh, a serial connection there. Um, it's got two power ports, an HDMI cable, and that is for um, headphones, that kind of thing. Anyway, so it, real compact, real um, easy, and also open software. So, sorry, let me get my act together here, film in, hold it right um, so anyway, um, I'm just doing the initial download. Basically, all your memory is an SD card. I've got a 32 gigabyte SD card. Uh, the people who have done this before loaded it theirs all onto a 16 gigabyte SD card. And um, I'm gonna go through a couple steps on my own and then I will bring you up to speed. This is the Pi Pilot. So, as best as I can understand, this one is uh, goes to the uh, IMU or uh, motor controller. Okay, 
and it, you can set up where you're going to uh, control it from. At the moment, it's disabled, um, and it's going to connect to our Arduino. Arduino is the same thing like Raspberry Pi. It's a commercial, off-the-shelf piece of electronic gear. And in this case, all it does is controls a electric motor, DC 12 volt electric motor. All we're gonna have it do is turn right, left. We can set that up. Once we set that up, we'll also have a gyro compass magnometer accelerometer chip plugs in here. Uh, also GPIO. All these are GPIO pins. And you can get an expansion board for more. Um, so the accelerometer, magnometer, uh, gyro compass will plug into there. That'll tell us right left where we're at. Our GPS will plug in to the USB, will tell us where we are in the world. And then when we want to follow a track, plug in that track and go, all those pieces work together. This is what pins do what. <clears throat> 12C and 1W, I'm not entirely sure. Oh, 1W is gonna be our temperature sensors. That's right. Temperature sensors plug into GPIO pins. Hardwire. But you don't have to go through a special thing with those. They can just push There through. is, the only thing that there is is a calibration, I wanna say. I want to say that there's a, a, a calibration um, program so if you want it to go okay for every degree I want it to turn you know I want the I want the rudder to turn 12 degrees okay and that's how many turns that is so that that kind of stuff is gonna to have to be input gotcha 12 turns to the right here's where zero is at 12 turns to the right uh, is, we'll say that that is probably be a, two degrees. It's not going to be a turn thing because there's not gonna, there's no sensor on the motor, so it'll be a, you'll have to do it at a time. What we'll have to do is steps. We'll have to time the motor. Okay. And so it'll be a time related. If if it's anything like the motor controllers that I've used in the past, so it'll fire voltage one direction for you know 0.23 seconds okay so what you could do is just for whatever distance you know we measure how long it takes mm -hmm. like we just plug in and we and we don't even have to be that accurate because we can modify it in the program so but we uh, say we want full rudder from straight ahead to all the way to the left we hit voltage time it mm -hmm. take it off and it Okay, we're there. Take it off. We're gonna make a full run at it, and then take that time and say it goes from zero to this many degrees in this amount of time, zero to half of that in half of that time, <clears throat> and then the other direction would be the same amount of time. And then we go out and we do it, and it doesn't do it exactly right. You can alter the time slightly right. and get that fixed. Now why can't we, instead of going through all that, why can't we just plot the course and have the ship following the course and as soon as it varies all off of GPS, it just trigger out a five volt signal second that our boat leaves the course, say, towards the east, it sends out a five volt signal out one pin. Or if it leaves out the west, it sends out a five volt signal out the other pin. And then all we have to do is so it does it. something like that. I don't understand it all 100%. Well, if that had, if those pins are doing that, like if we could set it up to just ignite one of those pins with like almost no amperage, just a 5 volt signal and a 5 volt signal in the other direction, we wouldn't even need like a motor controller. All we would need is some relays. And it, it doesn't really matter what. The only thing it would be is like it might jerk the boat, you know, if we did yeah. too much or something like that. So that might be why that we would want a um, motor controller. controller. But basically, if we could get the fire, we have it turn, the boat comes back, it hits the line, it stops, mm -hmm. it drifts to the other side, it turns back, 
and then eventually it would just yeah, find it itself go. out. Um, there's a lot of videos out there, and I'm not trying to make a video on how to build it. I'm sh just showing how to incorporate what we have into this yeah. and build an ex inexpensive chart plotter. It's going to be so cool. But autopilot. So uh, killer. This is from Open Plotter. This is the wiring diagram and pinout schedule for both the IMU and the temperature pressure sensor. All right, so these are our a couple of <clears throat> boards that we ordered for our autopilot. The one on the left is the temperature, humidity, barometric pressure sensor, and the one on the right is actually our um, uh, compass. So it's electromagnetic um, compass. It also has um, a nine-way gyro, so um, accelerometer. So uh, it tells when we're turning and you know speed and whatnot. So um, we're gonna. I've got these tips. We're gonna solder those into place and then get them ready to wire up to the Raspberry Pi. Spliced together two of the DuPont wires on this side going to one DuPont wire on this side I've got my heat shrink and we're gonna solder those together this will be my ground going to those two sensors okay so this will be our autopilot got the Raspberry Pi the Raspberry Pi uh, will be connected to several things here the temperature humidity sensor just because that's extra this is our compass and so wherever that points the boat is where the boat is going um, I have this um, <clears throat> LCD touch screen it's from a, a tough book Panasonic tough book <clears throat> and then I've got this is our Arduino this is gonna drive the 12 volt motor that is in that piece that we printed the 3d printed gear for and then lastly this is our GPS puck right here so these three these components combined with the autopilot part that I had that worked will make up our autopilot chart plotter um, GPS sensors for the engine eventually um, and potentially radar uh, based on some of the things I've been reading about the program, the operating system open plotter. All right, we'll get started and we'll catch you up on the next video.